So one last thing I wanted to mention is the two guys behind the oven, Moore Applebaum and Chris Henderson from Hindi Amps, they're guys that just love gear. They're not a company, you know, with corporate agendas and stuff like that. Moor develops gear for his own use as a mastering engineer. Uh, things that will benefit him, things that he's, when he's working, he feels like he's missing and he needs those things, then he develops that gear. Chris develops amazing gear himself. Uh, amps, guitar amps, preamps, compressors, all real nice, beautiful, high-end stuff. Um, so these guys are making tools that they love to use. It's not just like, hey, I want to build a compressor and put it out there with my name on it so I can be known. It's It's, it's, they made it for themselves, and it was successful, and then they decided, hey, like maybe we could sell a few of these and have other people enjoy the benefit that I'm getting. So that's kind of where this, this piece comes from, the oven, and I think that's really cool, you know. So one last thing I wanted to mention about the oven is the guys behind it. Chris Henderson, who, who couldn't be here, he develops and designs a lot of cool uh, gear, amps, guitar amps, preamps, compressors, uh, beautiful stuff, handcrafted things. And in collaboration with Moor, Applebaum, Moor has designed stuff with different companies when he needs a tool that he doesn't have in his own studio. Uh, he's looking for something, he has the idea, you know, he wants this, he wish this piece of gear had this function, but it doesn't. Maybe he could make one or design one. And he collaborates with different companies, in this case with Hindi Amps. And he filled a void in his own studio, and his own workflow, um, for something he needed. It wasn't, you know, it's not a corporation with a, an agenda and, you know, trying to make a certain number of units and sell a certain number of units per year. It's like this is, this gear comes from necessity uh, in their own lives and own own workflow. Moore does a lot of mastering, a lot of different genres. Uh, he and I have worked on a lot of projects together. And he, I've noticed in his studio, he has a lot of different gear, different compressors. He's not running the same equipment on every single master he does. Not the same compressor, same EQs, you know, limiter, blah, blah, blah. He's got different choices. He's always one for different colors. And the oven certainly fits in that realm of providing a lot of different tonal options and uh, that's why it exists out of necessity so the last thing I wanted to mention is the guys behind the oven uh, Chris Henderson of Hindi Amps who couldn't be here today he is uh, you know known for making beautiful gear uh, microphones compressors uh, two preamps guitars amps um, He's got a reputation for just making top-notch stuff. And Moore Applebaum, well-known mastering engineer, uh, I've been to Moore's studio, and he doesn't have just one chain that he runs every master through. He has many different pieces of gear for many different tonal options. He's very into exploring what works best for each song, not just putting the same thing on every song. And I really respect that, especially if I'm going to send him a master. I want him to be into it and find the best sound and uh the oven certainly fills that that space of being flexible tonally having mojo uh just being a vibe box and uh you know moor has collaborated with different companies when he's wanted something in a studio that he doesn't have like there's not there there was no oven you know that he could buy there was no piece of gear that does what this this thing does so uh, in the past, he's collaborated with these companies and, and on this with Hindi Amps to come up with something that's special, unique. It's not just another compressor emulating an old vintage unit. It's not just another EQ, parametric EQ that costs, you know, tons and tons of money. It's a special thing. It does a special thing. It's so flexible. And it's got so much vibe to it. And um, Chris and Moor have definitely put their all into it. And uh, I really respect that. And I'm glad it exists. Okay, so I want to ask you what some of the knobs do, because I know what I hear when I turn them, but I think you should probably explain it more elegantly. So let's start with the temp and the cook. Like, what exactly is the difference between the two? Because to me, they're just, they're more knobs. I get more when I turn them. 
So what are what are the temp and the cook? What do they do? Well, without getting too complicated into things, just to avoid the situation where things don't match up with what we're hearing, uh, think of it this way. The unit is divided to three sections. The coloration section, which is will be the temp and the cook. The tone shaping section, the basic ones will be the burners, the low, mid, and top. Okay. And then the sizzle. That's another section. Okay. Okay. Now, um, when temp and cook are at zero, then the burners and the sizzle become the tonal shaping options. Okay. Once you apply temp or cook or temp and cook, then the tonal shaping options start to become more like saturation options and more like coloration with saturation and tone shaping together. Um, temp is really what affects the unit as the most. So okay. any movement of temp will affect anything afterwards, even okay. if it's the cook, it's the low, mid, and top, and sizzle. Cook by itself is in a separate section, but it works together. So to like make it less complicated <laughs> from that, um, temp is a saturation that is solid state. Okay. And the unit by itself is a solid state unit with a tube section. Okay. The tube section is the cook. So if you put temp at zero, and let's say you just play with the cook, then you're just adding the tubes section. Oh, okay. Now, let's say you're at this so people won't try to copy your settings. Yeah, those are private settings. Those are private and secret settings. Okay. Magic. Magic knobs. So, if we start the unit just with no cook and no temp, and you just do these things, either up, down, attenuate, boost, these are your normal tone shaping normal. They're not normal, but they're yeah. normal to the unit. Sizzle is only adding, okay? So if I do cook like this now, I just introduce the tube to the whole unit. Okay. And the more I do this, the more tube sound in. Now you have the temp, which will push the whole unit, and that's the solid state saturation. Okay. If you only have cook, and then this on zero, then you're just adding that nice bloom underneath yeah. with the tube sound. If you're just doing this, you're pushing the whole thing okay. forward and you're saturating it. If you do both of them, you're saturating and pushing things forward and you're saturating the cook it as well. So if it's only cook, then it's going to be a very nice subtle bloom underneath. And if you only do temp, the whole thing will move forward. Okay. It's, and if you combine the two, you're getting the benefit of both. Okay, now what about the switches that go with them? Okay, so the switches are for each section of those two. So uh, above the temp, you have low and high. That's the intensity of the temp. Okay, so if I have a setting of the temp and I go from low to high, is that the same thing if, as if I left it on low and just turned it up more? No, it will affect differently because... Oh, really? If you put it here and you do the temp jump between high and low, it will give you a different sound than if you do it here. It, oh. it will sound close, okay. but it's still different. So you can get the high in a way, but you'll have to push it much further. But then you have less of the resolution. Mm -hmm. So if you put it in low, you can get really, you know, push it harder and go in between. But if you put it high, you're already starting to push it I and see. saturate it earlier. In some cases, you're better off doing the high, uh, you know, pushing it a bit than yeah. putting it low and pushing it harder. Sure. Also, when you have high, you can actually saturate it even more than if you were low and pushing it high. So, you know, if you have these notes, sustained notes, bass notes, or whatever you want to really saturate, go to high and you already start hearing it earlier and you can push harder okay so the the temp high and low is the intensity but it's it will be like extending what you have here i see so you know more like 
driving it further. You want to call it overdrive, you can, but, uh -huh. but that's in a way that knob. Um, in the cook, you have the bake and broil, and that's the voicing of the tube. Uh -huh. Bake is more balanced, hi-fi-ish, and then broil edges it a bit. It sounds a bit more compressed and a bit more edgy. Not very far, but c close yeah. enough to be still sounding good, but it has the edge. And it will compress a bit. Like if you look at the wave file, it's going to look a bit weird because okay. it will compress it more. And then electric and gas is the intes intensity of the, cook. of the cook. So electric is quite nice and easy and more like hi-fi. Think of it as like bake and electric sounds really easy on the ears. You know, it's, it's very balanced and nice. Once you turn that to gas, it will push it more. You'll hear that low end even more pushed and, and the bloominess and the richness will be more extreme. Yeah. If you put it in broil and gas, you'll start hearing more compression happen. So uh, the combination between these will change the tone. Um, for mix bus, a lot of times I'll go for bake and then choose between electric and gas. Okay. And you can do small settings and put it in electric and be happy with how it sounds and then just flick the switch and be like, oh, is this too much or good? In some cases, gas and, and, and bake works really nice. In some cases, it pushes the low end more, so you'll go for electric gotcha. where it's more subtle. Um, if you want to saturate stuff really hard, you put the temp in high, push it high, put break, ba a broil, and then gas and you'll get a lot of saturation. Right. Um, a lot of times you can just work with this section. It will be enough to get so much sonic possibilities just from the coloration from the tube and solid state combination, either just yeah. the, the cook or the temp or both of them together. And of course with the voicings. Um, broil works really good also for mastering or mix bus processing because it, it will a bit compress it and edge it a bit and you can just put a bit of the cook and we'll be fine in some cases you know put more temp and a bit cook or the opposite put more cook and a bit temp and you can go wild with some styles like hip-hop where you want that sustain on the low end you can push it hard yeah. and, and and get that you know urban music you can really push hard yeah. that low end so what are the three switches underneath? Down the, there, yeah. The three switches underneath here are for the burners. So each burner knob has A and B. So you see low burn type, mid burn type, top burn type. Okay. So for example, the low end, if you put it in A and you boost or cut, you're boosting the subs or cutting the subs, whatever you decide. So it's not a big boost, it's a subtle boost, but you can push it harder if you want. And it just, get, it's a very broad band, so it will basically lift up all that low end okay. that's lower in the sub area, sub plus, kind of. If you go to B, then it adds or subtracts whatever you decide, the more base or upper base area so a is lower b shifts at the range higher yes okay so let's say you have an acoustic track or or a song that's not too th thick and heavy with the low end and you want to boost that you put it in b and then you add um, if you have a song that has enough upper range bass and low mids and you just want to boost the subs you go to a okay gotcha um, there could be a situation where you have a song that has a lot of low end, but you want to clean that up, and at the same time you want to have more low end in the lows lows. You put it in B, you subtract some of the bass as attenuating it in the low burn, and then you add in the temp or in the cook or just the cook or temp together, whatever you decide. But you compensate from the coloration area. 
um, and another example is um, let's say you have a track that has a lot of sub information that you, you want to clean up you can do the same put it in A and then subtract and maybe to compensate you can add maybe just in the temp a bit and that way it will clean up some of the subs but you'll gain the forwardness of it okay um, I find that a lot of times the upper range of the base can be a bit muddy and that's why you can clean up put it in B and just subtract a bit okay and it will just clean up and tighten that low end then add as much as you want forwardness and saturation from the unit and you can put sometimes a bit of the cook just to get that bloominess underneath um, also if you're doing urban tracks and you want to get the low end much fuller but you don't want to muddy, muddy up yeah. too much up then you put it in A and you just add a bit either one or two would be enough for mix bus yeah. uh, of course you can go further if you want the mid range which is the mid burn type a and B are different areas, but it's also how uh, the range is, not just the frequency, but how it responds there. Um, a and B are very different, and you'll find yourself, you know, maybe boosting it and then auditioning A and B and seeing which one you like more. Right, that's what I do. <laughs> or, or even subtracting, like scooping, and you'll see which one you like. Uh -huh. um, I find that scooping with the mid is really easy without pushing it really far like yeah. a lot of times i see eqing you know people do this a lot right. or they you know like really hard scoop and in other eqs it's it's needed because you really need to, to do that in order to achieve that sound that fullness but here you can do it just with two or three is enough to scoop right. you don't have to go really far right. with the scoop at the same time the boosts here they're not honky has a lot of mid-range. Yeah, they're very smooth. So you can just decide which type you want. If you want the kind of the fuller mid or the more edgy mid. Um, and then in the high end, because they're very broad, you can do the same thing by boosting or, or cutting and deciding A or B, which one you like. Okay. And it's, it's that range if you want the more higher or from the lower. The interesting thing is that the top one has another function that's operated by the Bunsen. Bunsen burner. Yeah. Nice. And the Bunsen is taking the top burner and gives it another option which is instead of just top it actually brings a presence in. Oh, okay. So if you have A and B here when it's on Bunsen off when you turn this on it's like C and D. Oh, really? So this will still operate with Bunsen. Okay. So let's say you need to push a piano in the mix and you want to hear the hammering of it. Yeah. And it's hard to, to level it up without just hearing, you know, the, the, the sustained notes and you want to hear that push. You can just decide, you can top burn it and A and B and decide which one you want and then add the, the Bunsen and you'll hear that the Bunsen will bring that presence out. Same with vocals. If, if, if you're adding mid-range and you're happy with how the mid-range comes out, but now you want a bit of presence, just apply, you know, in and out and see which of the top works for you. Sometimes the Bunsen will bring the body that will fit, and sometimes you want less of that body. Uh, acoustic okay. guitars can get more presence in the mix. When you add the top, you can put the buns in. Uh, even on mix bus or, or mastering, the buns in, in small amounts can add forwardness to the upper mid section, oh, okay. which will be the presence. And usually it wouldn't need too much. If you have a harsh vocal, for example, you can lower down this, the top burner, and apply the buns in, and it will clean up some of that. Right. Then you compensate with the sizzle. That's like one of the examples you showed. Right. So, so Bunsen only affects the top burner. Oh, not the others. Okay. Not the others, and and basically it gives you two more options of sonic possibilities on the top end. So if without it, you know you got these two that you know. Now apply that, and you got two more options. Okay. 
Um, so I'm going to stop you guys there. I've got four minutes of film time left here. So okay, I'm going to wrap that up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then in sizzle, sizzle you only add up. You can't subtract. So it's more sizzle yeah. or less sizzle, but not under sizzle right. or not cut the sizzle. And then with this one, you also have A and B, which lets you two options where this, the first sizzle is more lower, which is, is less spaciousness, and then the other sizzle goes up. And it's, uh, it's really high when you go Yeah. the second option. Exactly, and you can push it even further. Yeah. And then you got the flow knob. The flow knob is like a trim knob or an output, but it's only attenuating. So full, it's zero. And when you go down, you're attenuating. And this okay. is to adjust for level compensation where right. when you're adding temp and cook and others, you're starting to build up volume. And if your converter gets hit hard, you can lower it down so it's not clipping your converter. Right. Sure, sure. Usually I put it in zero because that's in full. And if, if you saturate really hard and you don't want the, you know, the next stage to distort, you can lower it down. If, if you're hitting another piece of gear next to it and it's pushing it too far, you can adjust with that as well. Um, flow as like flow of air, flow of, yeah. you know, that's basically what it is. Uh, you got two bypasses, uh, toggle switches. It's true bypass when it's like this, it's running through the unit. If it's like that, it's just connecting input to output as a true bypass. Okay. Calibration, we talked about that before, about you know matching the left and the right or yeah. pushing the unit harder or giving more headroom to the unit. The last switch I want to mention is burned. Uh, when this is up, and remember, up means lo-fi. means it's changing the whole sound of the unit to less good, <laughs> less nice, more, more, uh, more uh, squeezed and... Um, less uh, fidelity and, and the quality okay. goes down. Yeah. That's pretty. Just, just make sure that you keep it down and not up. Down means the unit is working great. Burned means the unit is being burned. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Then you get this nice blue light to keep it romantic and nice. Awesome. Well, it was a pleasure doing this with you, Bob, and uh, thank you for being an, an early adopter and supporting this and I'm hearing the stuff you're doing with this and it sounds amazing so thank you I love it so it's, it's a lot of fun to work with thank you for doing this and um, listen to Bob Horn's work he's amazing Grammy winning multi-platinum mixer and beyond that he's an amazing person I know him for so many years and he's always been a good friend and a good person and he supports the scene and supports fellow musicians and engineers. Thank check you very his much. check his workout, Bob Horn.